Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to verify trigonometric identities. Now, remember an identity is basically um, stating that the left side of an equal sign is, e is the same as the right side of an equal sign. So um, here, you can see that none of our left side or our right sides are exactly equal to each other. Um, so what we want to do, that's what verifying is. We're going to verify that one side is equivalent to the other side. Now, to do that, there's kind of a little step-by-step -step process we want to do. And, and again, we're going to be using a lot of the same techniques and um, um, identities, like Pythagorean identities, even odd, um, and so forth, from our uh, simplifying trigonometric expressions. So basically what we're going to do is when we're looking at this, you know, there's no one right way to do it. So I might show you a way and you might say, oh, well, this way is easier. A lot of times there might be an easier way, or maybe it's easier for you, or easier for other people. It's just the way that either I chose to show it on the video, or the way that I personally saw it. And again, there's going to be multiple different ways to arrive at proving an identity is going to be true. The best way that I, um, through my experience, that I like to look at them is I like to, since I like to find the side of the identity that looks the most complicated. All right. So there's usually typically going to be one side that's more complicated than the other side. And once we get into a little bit more complicated identities, um, that might not be as obvious. So I'll kind of show you which one I, I always like to think is the more complicated than the other, or which one I like to uh, change. And here, I think it's pretty obvious on one side either has only one trigonometric um, expression or it has a, uh, or a number, and the other side has multiple. So we're typically going to start on the side that's going to have multiple, um, multiple identities. And when you pick your side, basically all we're going to do is try to simplify it so it looks like the other side by using our, Pythagor by using our trigonometric identities. Now, not always are we going to be able to use identities. A lot of times we can just rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines. So in this example here, I don't really have an identity for secant of y times cosine of y. However, I do know that I can rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines. So basically what I'll do is I'll rewrite secant as 1 over cosine of y times cosine of y. And I'll rewrite that over 1 is equal to 1. And always, just like when you're solving an equation, always rewrite the whole identity. Um, a lot of times, if you just want to keep on writing equals, that's fine. But I see a lot of students that kind of get, they just they just start working on one side, and they like totally forget that it's equal to the other side. And they make a lot of mistakes that way. So my theorem is to always write down one side. Obviously, when you have two complicated sides, you can start you know, doing some shortcuts. But just always remember that this side is equal to that side. So now when I multiply across, I'm left with cosine of y over cosine of y is equal to 1. Well, obviously, cosine of y over cosine of y is just equal to 1. So equal to 1. So now you can see that I have been able to verify that the left side is equal to the right side. So I just write a little check mark and saying that my um, identity is verified. In the next example, I have 1 plus sine of theta times 1 minus sine of, oops, parentheses wrong, 1 minus sine of theta equals cosine squared of theta. OK, so whenever you have an operation uh, for an identity or even simplifying, the best thing to do is apply that operation. So we have multiplication here. So what I'm going to want to do is, again, use my distributive property or FOIL, whatever you want to think about it. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative sine of theta is negative sine of theta. Sine of theta times 1 is going to be a positive sine of theta. And sine of theta times negative sine of theta is a negative sine of theta squared of theta. And that still equals cosine squared of theta. Well, now you can see negative sine of theta plus sine of theta. Those do, um, subtract the 1. So I'm left with 1 minus sine squared of theta equals cosine squared of theta. Well, you should know by using your Pythagorean identities that 1 minus sine squared of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta. And therefore, we can show that my uh, identity has now been verified. In the next example, um, again, this looks like a pretty simple one, but rather than the multiplication equaling 1, now it equals cotangent of x. So again, though, we're just going to rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines and see what happens. So I have cosine of x times 1 over sine sine of x equals cotangent of x. Well, this gives us 1 cosine of x, that's over 1, times sine of x equals cotangent of x. And obviously, remember, sine over cosine is equal to tangent. So cosine over sine is going to equal cotangent of x equals cotangent of x. Done. Um, in the next example, now we have a little bit of our even and odd identities. So we want to make sure that we, uh, 
we not only use our Pythagorean identities, but also use our even and odd identities. And I just wanted to make sure, yeah, it was negative cotangent, I don't remember. Um, so when we have cotangent m of x, first thing we're going to want to rewrite this as negative cotangent of x times sine of x equals negative cosine of x. Now I'm going to rewrite this in terms of sines and cosine. Remember, cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So that's going to be cosine of x over sine of x times sine of x over 1. Well, now my sines divide into 1. That's equal to negative cosine of x. Therefore, I'm just left with a negative cosine over 1, which is negative cosine of x equals negative cosine of x. Verified. On uh, the next example, now we have three of them, but don't let that, don't let that you know, mess you up. Just rewrite all three of our terms, um, all three of these, in terms of sines and cosines. So we have cosine of x over sine of x, 1 over cosine of x times 1 over cosine of x times sine of x over 1 equals 1. Now we simply can just divide out the terms that are exactly the same in the numerator and denominator since everything is a cross multiplication. So the cosines of x divide to 1, the sines of x divide to 1. So I'm left with 1 is equal to 1. Verify. All right, in the next example here, we have cosine squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha equals 2 cosine squared of alpha. And this one kind of gets a little bit of, kind of gets some students here sometimes because we look at this and we say, all right, well, I have one side is in terms of cosine and sines, and the other terms in, si in terms of cosine. So the best thing to do is to rewrite the left side only in terms of cosines. All right. Um, so well, actually, that would be your thinking, but that's actually not what we're going to want to. Uh, uh, well, let's go ahead and see what happens, and then I'll show you. So. If I was going to rewrite this, remember our Pythagorean identity is sine of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha equals 1. So if I was going to rewrite sine in terms of cosine, so sine in terms of cosine, I would basically rewrite that as 1 minus cosine squared. So I'd have cosine squared of alpha minus 1 minus cosine squared of alpha. And that's supposed to equal 2 cosine squared of alpha. Well, when I go ahead and apply my distributive property here, 6, let me just cosine squared minus sine squared. Oops, I forgot to write that in. That's minus 1. I was like, that doesn't going to work out. I didn't write down the whole problem. My bad. Minus 1. OK. Um, that makes a lot more sense. So if I rewrite these all in terms of cosine, then it's going to look like that. Now, by applying my distributive property of negative 1, I'm left with cosine squared of alpha minus 1 plus cosine squared of alpha equals 2 cosine of alpha minus 1. Well, now you can see that I can combine my cosine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha, and then I'll have minus 1. So I have 2 cosine squared of alpha minus 1 equals 2 cosine squared of alpha minus 1. And that has now been verified. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you verify trigonometric identities. Thanks.